as a warm-up, let's think about a few questions related to this experiment. Okay, so let's S be the sample space. Okay, uh, the question is, uh, what is the size of the sample space? I'll give you a few seconds to think, and you can pause the video if you need more time. All right, uh, you have n balls, right? You have n balls, and you have n bins, and each ball pick a random bin, right? This ball might pick another, and you can see that uh, we can view this as the our usual tree structure, right? And then the first ball pick one of the bins, and then the next ball pick another, you know. Bins. So this is a choice for the first ball, and this is a, the choice of the second ball. Okay, for each ball, each of the ball has n choices, right? So um, and they pick them independently, and so we can think of this as an n steps process. Okay, so for each step, the first ball has n choice. The second ball also have n choices, and the third ball has n choices, and so on. The last ball has n choice, and there are how many of them? There are n of them. So the size of the sample space s is n to the n. All right. So let uh, e1 and e2 be events that bin 1 and bin 2 are empty respectively okay so you have a lot of bins now we just focus on the first two bin okay bin 1 and bin 2 so what's the probability that the bin 1 is empty and what's the probability that bin 2 is empty so I'll, I'll wait for a few seconds okay so that you can think about This is a nice question to think about, so if you need more time, just pause the video. Alright, um, so let's see. Uh, if you want, let's think about P of E1 first. So if you think about this, uh, the, the bin 1 is going to be empty throughout the experiment if no balls pick it right so the first uh, so how many outcomes are there that ignore bin 1 okay so if you recall from our previous warm-up question is that um, so if you have uh, n bins right and the first ball has n choice however it has it cannot pick bin 1, right? Because we, we want bin 1 to be empty. So the choice for the number of choice for ball 1 is there's only n minus 1 choice, right? For ball 2, there's another only n minus 1 choice as well because you cannot pick bin 1, right? So if you think about this for all the bins, they only have n minus 1 choices. And th these choices are independent of each other, right? And and for each ball, whatever the previous ball is doing, I only have, I have exactly n minus 1 choices. Okay, so c to come up with this, uh, the number, so we get that the number of outcomes. And note that all the outcomes are equally likely, right? The number of outcome is uh, that leave bin one empty is so you have n minus one and you have you multiply them all right so n minus one to the n right so when you we get to the probabilities you. Take a, you know that the size of the sample space is n to the n, and 
and the outcome that we want is this. So we know that uh, P of E1 This is uh, n minus 1 to the n over n to the n. Okay, so we let's manipulate this a little bit. So let's become n minus 1 over n to the n. Okay, you can use this form or if you like, yes, you can use this one. So this is the, the probability that bin 1 is empty. Okay, so how about PE2? Note that the same argument work fine if we just, you know, you know replace n, n bin 1 with bin 2, right? So P of e, E2 is also the same number, 1 minus 1 over n to the n. All right, so let's look at another warm-up question. Now, we know that P of E1 equals P of E2, and that's uh, n minus uh, n minus n1 over n to the n. Okay, so we know that P E1 equal P equals P E2 equals, you know, 1 minus 1 over n to the n. Okay. The question is, is this two events independent? Okay, so the way to check that is that you need to check if uh, P1, e, P, e, P E1 times P E2, and we know both of them, we need to check if it's equals to uh, P e1, e2, right. So we need to figure out this term, okay. So what's the probability that both bin are, both bin are empty? So we need to uh, use the same kind of argument again. Okay, so we, we do not allow the balls to choose these two bins. So for each ball, it has only n minus 2 choices, okay. So since each ball has only n minus two choices, the number of outcome is gonna be because you have n balls, and so they can have this many outcomes. So we know that probability that these two events is true is uh, n minus two over n to the n. Okay. However, this term. This term equals n minus one to the n uh, n minus one over n to the n square, right? Because both of them are equals, so so this becomes two n, okay? and and clearly they are not equal, okay? So you know that uh, this event e one and e two are not independent. So the answer is no, they are not independent. Okay, so if you don't want to do this calculation, okay, you can you can think about this. Uh, the fact that e1 is empty, okay, so if this bin is empty, then all the balls supposed to uh, fall into this uh, the rest of the bins, okay. So it's like you have one bin less, so the the probability that uh, this bin will be empty will be less than before, right? Right, because you know you seem to have more balls here, and then so uh, it's more likely to fall into this bin too, right? So these events are, are not independent. Okay, so that's just the that's the warm up. So we know that the event that uh, these bins are empty are not independent, and it's getting worse if you have uh, three of them, four of them. All right.